as a society, we have a massive bias against creativity and push it into a very specific corner. However, I believe that creativity is intrinsic to all human beings and that this bias is in fact robbing us of the capacity to do amazing things. And the fact that our businesses and our countries even are run with the segregation between the creative haves and the not haves is in my view, one of the biggest sources of social ills because it disempowers people and takes away the idea that we can generate our own options and therefore take control of our own lives. Perfectly framed. I like that. No, but I, it, it, I really do resonate with that. And I guess that's why we connected and, you know, we got to know each other, right? Because there's so many people who, for whatever reason, uh, for us as coaches, um, in terms of the way people think, I guess it's just a story people are telling themselves. And I, when I say just, you know, I'm tongue in cheek about that. I know it's quite difficult when, you know, these things just, they set in as we get older, you know, as child, you know, as, as, as children, we're very creative. As you say, uh, it's innate, right? And as we get a bit older, people tell us, you know, you can't draw, you're not good at art and all this other stuff. Yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm it, wrong. Sorry, go on. Yeah. But I think there's, you know, that is very true. The way we're educated does tend to beat it out of us. But there's something else going on there as well, which is essentially the fear of failure, of being wrong. And one of the key tenets of creativity is experimenting, which means running the risk of not getting it right the first time, of not being perfect, of not getting 10 out of 10 and, and, and being the top of the class. And as a society, we are massively intolerant of that idea. And especially if you look at the way corporates run, there's the line and then everyone must stick to the same line. And even when businesses are talking about you know, diversity, diversity of thought, diversity of representation, what that mostly means is saying the same stuff in slightly different ways, not actually encouraging any diversity at all. And that ties into the, the third real big problem is that we are obsessed with very tangible measurability of everything. And because so much of what goes on with creativity is kind of unseen until the result emerges, in modern business, people really struggle with that because how do you measure that? How do you put a value on that? How can I turn that into a KPI or a KPA? And uh, how can we put you through the nine box process if half of what you're doing, you can't even explain? Yeah, I love that. And I guess that's been my struggle in my corporate career, right? That I'm really creative as a leader, as a people manager. However, some of my colleagues, especially, um, I guess not so much my peers, although it was a challenge at times, but it was mostly the people above me that were never comfortable with, you know, exactly what you were saying that culturally it's mentioned, you know, we must be more creative and this, that, and the other. But then in terms of actual tangible delivery on allowing freedom for people to fail and get creative. And again, just to build trust and engagement. Honestly, I believe through, I guess, from my experience, uh, you know, working for some of these big companies, you, exactly what you said, you need to have room to experiment. And actually, okay, yeah, you could say it's not measurable, okay? But when I've seen companies with deeply engaged people where there's trust built and they're allowed some level of freedom, because obviously we still have to meet goals, KPIs, money has to be made for shareholders. You know, we have to be realistic, but the companies where they have a bit more range to be able to, you know, play at will and fail as long as they learn and reflect and then they can build upon that. These companies are firing on all cylinders and I'd hazard the guess that their top line and their profitability is much better. So I know what you're saying. It's really difficult to measure, you know, some of these creative approaches, but I would guess that we could measure it after the fact with, you know, employee enge engagement surveys, that but kind of thing. There's something that crossed my mind. You know, creativity was always in the past uh, uh, related to art. Yeah. And, and I also think, I even think that it wasn't even related to scientists, like people that created things like really amazing, like Tesla or, or you know, all these guys. And they, they were never seen as a creative people. They were seen as scientists, as, as if creativity had nothing to do with that. Yeah. This is what I recall hearing. 
but I think because of the art and creativity being related only to or mainly to art, creativity has a um, it sounds uh, not serious. Yeah. And that's the thing. So we've also got a very stereotypical idea about what a creative person looks and sounds and behaves like. And we, what we've done is we focused very much on the one kind of creative person. You know, you can be highly creative and be high detail, very structured and very process driven. In other words, a scientist <laughs> or an inventor. Or you can be a massive uh, big picture person who takes intuitive impulsive leaps you know, the one does not contradict the other. They are merely different expressions of the self-same instinct. And yeah, exactly what you're saying, Mia. We've, for, I don't know, some bizarre reason chosen to focus on the least explicable representation of creativity and said that is the thing, whilst conveniently ignoring the fact that every time you solve even the most mundane problem at home or at work, you are exhibiting a skill which no other being on this planet has. You're able to imagine a, a fantastical or an alternative future and see it so clearly in your head that you can then act in a way that makes it real. That's creativity. 